What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be putting out a full stack Calendly clone where users can open up the app. They get shown what appointment dates are available. You go to them and you can see the time slots. So our implementation of this project is based on how the Calendly app works. So we navigate here, we're able to book an appointment, we enter this information and we schedule an event and we get the confirmation. And that's what we go through in this course. We're using navigation stack here and you actually, we go through on how to, you can pop to the root view. And we actually go through and set up everything on Superbase. If you guys aren't familiar with Superbase, I have a series on it on my channel and it's been a lot of fun to play with. That's what we'll be covering in this course. You get a few hours of straight Swift UI, Superbase, navigation stack. And if you guys actually want the source code, it's available to the Patreon. It helps support the channel and provide more tutorials like these. Definitely check that out. And I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first thing, let's create a project. Let's call this, we'll just call it Calendly. And shout out to Cavsoft, by the way. Some of the calendar stuff, I took inspiration from one of their videos. So shout out to them. You should definitely check out their channel. All right, before we start coding, I just brought in a PNG of myself just to use for this, uh, for the preview. All right, so back in our VStack, we can get rid of this image and replace it with JSON, which is the image I just brought in here. And you can use whatever image you guys want. Resizable, scale, fill frame 28 by 128 let's bring in a corner radius of 64. And we'll do calendly course underneath font large title bold let's see title uh, i like title better now let's get into the calendar and if you guys want to recreate a line like this ever in a swift ui there's actually a really easy way you can just use a rectangle and you can assign a width of actually the width you can leave it empty and the height you do one and you get something like this and this is being um because we have pad in here that's why it's being truncated or yeah the edges aren't being touched but if you remove the padding it does the whole screen and we'll keep it like that and let's do a foreground color of dot gray I'll give it a, that'll give it a lighter color now let's work on our calendar section so i'm gonna create a v stack in here create another text select a day this needs to be a title title two title two looks good and if you want to keep it the same we'll bold it next we need to create this this section here and for that we'll use an h stack h stack and this h stack will have i'm just going to bring in a spacer to start because the spacer will help us put this image like right here on this um let me just show you guys so Let's bring in the, these are system images. The first one is a less than, and we can make this resizable. You can do scale to fill, do a frame, bring in width and height. And for the width and the height, do width of 20. And the height I'm going with is 32. In between the arrows, there's a date and that'll be a text. We are in July now, or I mean, I think this is the last day of June, <laughs> but when this comes out, we'll be in July. And this one should be greater than, and you guys can play around with the width of this image. See which one you guys like the most. You see, sometimes I might go with this, I'll go with this one to get it a little similar. Or you guys can um, bring in your own images, but this is if we want to use S of symbols and we'll have to handle the foreground color, but we'll do that later down the line. But for now, let's have a spacer and a spacer. And then we'll put a spacer in here spacer in here this font can be title two yeah this looks, this looks good the spacer and one thing to note we should move this in a button since these will be buttons action back we can print for now that there's buttons these need a foreground color and for now as you guys see with calendy they have like this gray arrow when there isn't a date so let's let's just do dot gray dot gray now we got this part set up now we have to set up the dates of the week and to do that we'll need to create an array up top that has all the days of the week and i'm, I'm gonna copy and paste the array here since i already have it on the side and one thing i want to note is at least for me i like my calendars to start on monday but calendly starts there on sundays and a lot of calendars start on sunday but for me <laughs> i like to start on monday so if you want you could shift this to monday you would just have to do a little bit of different tweaks to our code and you can ask any questions in the comments if you run into any issues with that. We can get rid of this extra space. Oh, and let's get rid of this commented out padding. 
So this belongs to our H stack, which is just in charge of the the month. Just add a comment here called month selection or month. Yeah, month selection. That's here. And then underneath our month, we're going to put our days. That requires another H stack. And we can use a for each and refer to our days. This will be a day. We'll just say text. We just assign a text to each of these. And we can do a font system. And I'll do a size of 12 and a weight of, we can do medium. And you can get rid of design. We're not going to use that. Rebuild this. And I believe we need to bring in the ID. You can use uh, ID backwards slash dot self. Boom. And now they're showing up here. And there's two ways to get rid of this uh, or to spread them out. You can use a frame dot width equals infinity. Or you can put two spacers. So your options are to use the two spacers or add a frame max width of dot infinity. That gets rid of this and you can get rid of this. And it basically does the same. Boom. And that's our days of the week. And let's add some spacing in between these. So where is this V? I think we're embedded in a V stack here. Let's add some spacing of like 20 just to give our items some room, some room to breathe. They're hugging each other right now. All right. Now what we have to do is get our dates that are in this are in our month. And we'll do that underneath this. And it'll require us to use a lazy V grid. And again, this shout out to Kavsov. They created a video on the calendar and that's kind of the inspiration um, behind this method. So definitely check them out. And for columns, we're going to call array repeating and count. For repeating, we use grid item and you will use parentheses and you can use a dot flexible. And then we use a count. Make this bigger so we can see we have a count of seven. That's for each day of the week. Now we'll need a for each. All right, so in this for each, we're going to have to grab all the days of the current month so that we can display them in our calendar. And to do so, we're going to create a function underneath our view. So this is here. We're going to create it in our view underneath the body. Create a function called fetch dates. And this will return us an array. And what's the array going to be of? The array is going to be of a model that we're going to create called calendar date and calendar date is going to be a model and we actually have to conform to identifiables so it will be let id equal uuid underneath our id we're going to have a var called day this will be of type int and we're also going to have another var called date this will be of type date we're going to use this to signify each day in the month and that's why we're returning an array of it so in our fetch dates we can call we're going to create a variable called calendar since we're going to use the calendar a lot calendar.current this saves us from reusing it again and again. All right, so in our fetch dates function, how are we going to know what month we're tracking? And to do that, we're going to have to create a state var at the top. State var called selected month. And this will be an int equal to zero. And what we'll do is when we go back, we subtract one. When we go up, we add one. And there's a neat function we can create for that. And we'll call that fetch selected month. And we can just return a date. That's within that month. And I'm going to copy this, bring that in here. And we can grab the month using calendar.date by adding value to. And we're going to be adding value to the month. And the value would be selected month to the current date. So if you guys see, this is basically, since when we start, it's zero. It's just going to return. The selected month is the month we're in now, which for me is June. When you're watching this, is probably July. But as soon as we move our selected uh, month, either back or forwards, it's going to add a month to it. And that's how the app will know, oh, we're in a different month now. It'll call this function. It'll return this date within that month. And we're going to use that in our fetch dates to fetch the dates. And we can just force unwrap this. You could add a guardlet here, but we'll force unwrap it. This should not fail at all. Now in our fetch dates, we can call create a variable called current month say current month equals fetch selected month and now this is a date within the month that we want to grab all the days for so what that means is we're going to have to, we need to create a function that grabs all the days in any given month and there's a lot of ways you can go about doing that the easiest way and the the, the new cheat code is ask chat gpt and it will do it for you <laughs> and that's literally what i did to be honest and for me it gave me the exact answer right away but for you it might give you like an error so just See what it gives you and like play around with it. But this is the function that it created for me. 
And you got and you can review it once you see it. So it grabs the current month and the current year of the date. And then it goes to day one and it marks a start date as day one of the of that month and that year. And then it marks the end date of the same month. And then we just though it looks like we're just looping through it and appending it to an array of dates. And then this current date is keeping track of what date we're at. So we start on day one and then you see here we add a day every time we append the current date to our array. And that's how we get all the days in that given month. If you have any questions on this, let me know in the comments. And now we can use this extension because we made this as an extension on date. And this current month is a date. So we can say current month dot dates of month. And this is returning us an array of dates. And we can map this to a calendar date with the day value being we can grab the int of that given date by using calendar dot component. I'm going to say day from the given value since the map function is going through each of these dates. So this will give us the integer value of that given date. And we'll just pass in that item. This is a var. I'll call it dates. And let's see what happens if when we return this. We're going to need to do some more modifications, but oh, <laughs> so now we actually need to call this function. Here we call fetch dates and this will be of we can just call this value. We'll just use a text and we're going to put value dot day, which is the the int. And this is what you guys see. And I believe and I'm in June while filming this. So this is returning June. So let me change this to one. All right. So as you guys saw this, this the fetch day should be working since we got we went from 30 to 31 when we changed the month to one which is July for my case, since I'm filming this in June. So now in our app, we need to take into account when the first day of the of the month is, whether it's like on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. And to do that, we can add values to this array that are going to serve as just placeholders and won't really do anything. And to figure out how many we need to add, we can grab the first day of week using calendar.component, the uppercase, we call it dot weekday. And for the date, we're going to use the first day of this array. And I'm going to change this to dates to make our lives easier. Dates.first.date. And this can be nil. So we're going to use some nil coalescing. Command B. So this first day of the week variable is giving us an integer at whatever day of the week the month starts at. So if it's on a Sunday, it'll be one. If it's on a Monday, two, Saturday, six, or et cetera, et cetera. And we can loop through these. We'll go from zero to the, to the amount or the number. That's the first day of the week minus one. And what we want to do is we want to insert, we call this one and we want to insert a calendar date. This will be minus one. This date doesn't matter. Just make sure you have a minus one because we're going to use that to check if it's um, a placeholder or not. And the integer is zero or at zero. And now you see this and July does start on a Saturday. So this looks good. And all we need to do in here is cut this out and say, if value dot day does not equal negative one. And now we need to create an else. So if it does equal negative one, just, just do empty an empty text. And we can embed this in a Z stack and we can add a frame to it to 32 by 32. That gives us a lot nicer spacing and, and actually we can add a spacing to our lazy V grid of 20. That gives us some more spacing on the vertical, on the vertical side of things, but this stuff is looking good. And I think we can, we can add some padding here. Haha. -ha. Now let's look at how it's looking versus Calendly. It's almost there. A little great value, a little great value Calendly. <laughs> But it's pretty close. We'll go to our back and forward buttons and let's do with animation current or selected month minus equal one. I'm going to copy this selected month plus equal one. And let's see if this upstates. Ah, yep. This is this should be June because June ends on a our this one update, but the days are updating and June did add on did end on a Friday and I believe it started on a Thursday. This looks right. Our birthday was in May. Shout out to those who know what day. This should be April, but this is looking good. This is looking great. No complaints on my end. You guys can knock yourselves out playing around with this. All right, we can create a state 
var called selected date. And we're going to be using this. You'll see why in a second. All right, so the selected date, we're going to use it to grab the title to update the month and the year. And before we implement that, let's go back to our extension and add. We're going to create a function. We'll call this month and year. And this function will return a string. Oh, not a stride, a string. And all we have to use is the date formatter. So formatter equal date formatter, formatter dot say date format equals. And what we want is month, 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 and year, year, year. We can return formatter dot string from self. Since this, is an, since this is an extension, we have access to self. And this text here, we can change it to select. Or we can change the selected date dot to that month and the year. And you can name the extension whatever you would like. And you see, for me, it's showing June because that's when I'm filming this. If I change this to zero, it'll be correct. And now, yep, go back here. And this is July. And you see, this isn't this is updating since we're not updating the date. And we can call the function here on change of selected month. So we can call on change of selected month when this index changes. We're not going to use this value, but we can say selected day equals fetch selected month. So we're in June, July, August. Let's try to go to 2024. Oh my God, we're already here. <laughs> and boom, that's our calendar. It's coming out really nice. Now let's add some few, a few more UI stuff. So we'll have to add a circle on days where there's appointments and also change the text color. And we'll have to add a dot underneath the current date. Now one thing I really quickly went is I capitalize all of these since that's what we have here. Now let's handle the selected date. All right. The way I did this is I created a background on the text. In this background, I've created a Z stack. And if so a value dot date equals equals date, if we want to do something. And you guys, some of you guys might notice something because this won't equal equal this unless the time is the same. The time might give us an issue. But let's see, circle. And if you guys see, we don't see anything on our calendar. And that's because this date is different from this date in terms of the time. They're not exactly the same. So I'm going to create an extension on date that's going to give us the day in a string format. And we'll use that to compare the days. All right. So this function string is going to return a string. And what do we need to do in this function? We need formatter dot for date formatter. Formatter dot date format equals... We're going to use month, day, year, and we can return formatter dot string from self. And we can put that here. We'll use that. And now we should see a circle. Haha. -ha! And this circle, it doesn't look good, right? And the first thing, let's change the frame. Let's bring in this one. Eight by eight. Get rid of the alignment. And what we'll have to do in our V stack, we'll have to go to alignment dot bottom. And if you guys see, we still have the, the circle here at the bottom, the little dot. And if we go to see, that's only on the 30th, which is when I'm filming this. I'm going to address the circle thing in a minute, but on top of the Z stack, we need to create uh, something else in the background, which is if there are meetings for that day, like that you can book, you need a little circle. So let's do that. So I'm going to use a circle. Frame, use 48 by 48, and you see this, and we can use a foreground color of dot blue with an opacity of 3, or 0 0.03. Aha, and now you see the dot is moved to the um, to the bottom, and we can remove this, and let's put it in, in a random if statement, just to see how it looks with and without. So if we do day, you guys can do module 2 does not equal zero and just paste that in there. And this just puts it in the this circle in the on the odd dates. But if you look at the current date, we still have this issue. So one way around that is we can do this and we can create a let's see how this looks with clear. So we'll create a ternary operator here actually. So we'll say value dot day modulo two does not equal zero. This basically gives us odd. If you do equal equal zero, it gives you even. So if this is true, it's odd. So if it's odd, let's do blue with an opacity of 0 0.3. Else, let's do dot clear. Look at the next. Aha! And it's showing up. It's showing up. 
And of course, we're going to be adding a condition here that's going to be different when we're connecting this to a backend. But right now, we're just working on the UI. So, and this is looking good. Now, what we're missing is we need bold and blue text. And we can handle that here. First, we'll do foreground color. And we actually, we could just copy this and just play around with this. We'll get rid of the opacity and we change this to black. And the next thing we need to account for is the font weight because if it has appointments, it's going to be bold. I'm going to copy this, paste that in here. So if it's true dot bold else none. And if we bring down this opacity, it'll pop out more. There we go. And it looks better kind of like this. And the last thing we're missing is, so this has to be gray, the current date. I'm going to bring this in here. Actually, let's bring this one because if it's, if there's appointments on the current date, I believe they use like a blue else they use like a gray because we can go back here. Yeah, it's like a little gray and our app is coming along. All right, continue where we left off. I'm going to go to the top of this V stack. Call frame and call max height. Set it equal to infinity. And then you want to call alignment. If I can spell it, there we go. And dot top. Hit command B. Now let's see, we did this on the V stack, correct? And if we refresh the preview up, you guys see it shifts it over, which is great. All right, a few things I wanna add now is, I wanna actually change these. That's then equal to, <laughs> I don't like the way it looks. Although it does look very similar to how it does in Calendly. I'm gonna change it just so our UI looks better. For these images, let's change it to scale to fit because scale to fill makes it look kind of distorted. And maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Do 20. There we go. All right. So now one thing we need to do is, so when, when we click on a date here that's going to have a, an available appointment, we want to navigate to another view that's going to show us all the available appointments for that date. So on Canly, you see here, this is what we have. And when you click on one of these, you're able to navigate to the next step, which will show you all the available appointments for that given date. So that's what we're going to be working on adding now. To do that, we're going to take this text, just cut all this out, and we're going to call navigation link here, destination and label. We're going to use this for now, but we're actually going to refactor this in a second. So we're going to paste this in there. And now for, let's put empty view for the navigation link. And if we try to navigate, will this allow us? I think we need to run this on the simulator. Oh, no. We actually need to embed this in navigation stack. So command click on this and then click embed. If you can't command click and it doesn't show up, and what I usually do is I double click on this and I cut all this stuff out. And then when I cut it out, I create a Z or I create a navigation stack and then I paste that stuff in there. So we're going to hit embed navigation stack. Hit command B. We'll refresh the preview. And now we're navigating. We're navigating. That's good. And one neat thing we can do is we can disable the navigation and we can disable for this. We need to disable it for the even numbers. So in order to disable it for the even numbers, we need to make sure that the day modulo two is equal, equal to zero. And now the odd numbers will navigate and the even numbers do not. All right, one thing I want to know is we're going to be using Superbase to handle our backend, and that's going to let us know what appointment dates are available. And we're going to use that information to, to actually make these blue or not blue, basically, if there's a, let, to let the user know if there's appointments available for that date or not. We're not doing that yet. First, I want to create these views, and then we're going to actually bring in that data and bring in Superbase. So let's work on the view first. I want to work on this view what happens when we navigate to a date. And if you remember in Calendly, when we navigate to a date, 
it brings you to something like this. So I'm going to minimize this, create a new file, Swift UI view. And what, what should we call this file? Let's call it, oh, I went with day view. All right. And in this day view, we're, I'm going to create a scroll view first. Oh. Scroll view. And in this scroll view, we're going to have a V stack. And you may be wondering why a scroll view, by the way. And that's because if we have like a lot of appointments available for that given date, then we want to be able to scroll through them. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to. And that's what the scroll view will help us with. All right, so in our V stack, we basically need a date at the top, which will be today's day, August 29th. I'm gonna hard code this in and then we're gonna refactor this. And mind you, this is gonna be in a navigation stack. So we can actually add a navigation title here, calling it today's date. So today is a Saturday and you make sure you want to do navigation bar title display mode inline. And in order to see this in your preview, you need to wrap this in a navigation stack. Oh, forgot the curly braces and boom. There we go. Now we got that. We're not going to cover time zone. Cause who cares about the time zone? <laughs> who cares about the time zone? And you can create a divider here and boom. Maybe add a little bit of patty or actually we can add, we can add some vertical padding to the divider. Vertical. Oh, get rid of this. After this divider, we have some text called select a time. Oh, this lowercase. This looks like large title and this is bold. All right. Then we need a duration. And for this project, all the, the appointments will be 30 minutes. And it'll actually be a cool challenge at the end of this. You guys can try to maybe incorporate an hour and 30 minutes into it. All right. Now after this, we're going to need to list out all the dates. So let's, I'm going to create a state var called dates. All right. In this array, I'm going to create a bunch of dates, Mock, not a bunch, probably like three calendar <laughs> bunch. All right. Date by adding value to, all right. So we're going to add minutes. Actually let's add an hour value one to date. Let's make sure you force unwrap like you, you, you put this, the exclamation point or the force unwrap, because this will basically be optional if you don't. And I'm going to take this, copy it three times. Or, and actually let's put the current time. What am I missing? Oh, the comma. Can't forget the comma. All right. And now we're going to create a for each here. And the for each is going to be dates. The ID can be self. And this will be a date. And what do we want here? Let's just go with button. For now, since we're going to have to handle this offset and we can just change it in the future. So we're going to need to add a text here and that text will be the date or the time of the given date. And how are we going to get the time? Well, if we go back to our project, I believe we have an extension on date. Let's search in our project. Yep. Down here, we have an extension on date, and let's refactor this to actually be in its own file. And this would be a Swift file. We'll call this date. 
plus ext. Paste that in there. All right, so we have these functions in here. Month and year, dates of the month. String, I don't this is not a good name. Let's refactor this. And let's call it, let's just say month, month date, year, format. I like this function better, this name. All right, so what do we need to do? So we need to create an extension. And for this extension, we basically just need to take the date and grab the time from it. And how can we do that? So let's create a func here. Func time from date. And we can return a string. And we basically just do something very similar to this except our date format changes. And what does it change to? It changes to H, H, M, M, A. This last part allows us to get like the AM or PM aspect of it. So let's go back to our day view. And if we call date dot time from date, let's refresh this. And in a second, we're gonna go back to our extension. Ah, there we go. And these are the dates, right? We have one, we have one, two, three, four, five, four, five. Let's add some padding to them. Boom. I want to go back to date extension really quickly. Ah, so. I was just reviewing this month and year format. Let's do month, year, format, month, day, year format. That looks better. It was confusing at first. And we have an issue. Oh, month, year format. And you make changes. I, I should have refactored instead of just renaming it, but Xcode let us know. So now back to this project. So if you look at this, it actually, these are bolded. The text is bold, so let's bold it. Boom. Another thing is I wanna add a frame max width of dot infinity. You'll see why in a second. Because if we add a background, and the background is gonna be a rounded rectangle corner radius 10 and do dot stroke boom this looks good and i'm gonna add some horizontal padding on the for each there we go voila voila all right so it's coming out nice now we got a handle when we click on this. So we click on this, it basically becomes selected. So let's create a state var underneath this. And let's call that state var selected date. And we actually want this to be optional. Since sometimes we don't have a selected date. But when somebody clicks on a date, it actually is selected. So, <laughs> so we let's do with animation because that gives you some nice shout out to Swift UI and Apple. That gives you a really nice animation. If you ever are using a button to change the state of your view, then you should use with animation to be honest. All right. And now let's see. Nothing happens again because we haven't set up any logic that actually changes stuff for the selected date. And we're gonna handle that here in the background. So we're gonna cut out this rounded rectangle. We're gonna create a Z stack. And I hate when Z stack does that. So I'm just gonna do that and then do this. Actually don't paste that there because we actually need to create an if statement. So if selected date equals equals date, we want something else. If it's not equal to date, then we want the rounded rectangle because that means that it's not selected or there isn't any date selected. 
But if the date is selected, what do we want? First, let's create a rounded rectangle. Let's do a 10 again. And let's click on it. There we go. Haha. -ha. But if you guys see, the fur uh, we actually need to turn it into gray. So we can do that using dot foreground color. If you're getting an issue, just write this. This is I'm not sure why it's telling me I can't do this. When I know my rights, I know what I can do. <laughs> I'm joking, but this should work. All right. Yeah, look, it changes it to gray. It's a weird Swift UI issue. And something to note, by the way, is if you ever want to add a gradient to a background like this, you can't do it here. Like, yeah, let's, this is very off topic, right? But this is just a random example. So if you ever wanted to add a gradient, you can't do it with the foreground. I believe we'll get an issue. Yeah, this is not going to load. Yeah, there we go. But if you change it to fill, fill will let you do this. Ba -ba. That's just a random side note in case you guys wanted to play around with gradients. But back to our project. So if it's selected, we do this. And now we need to do a foreground color on the text because it looks like we need to change our text color if it is selected. And if we go back to Calendly, we want the text color to be white. So we'll say selected date equals equals date. This is a ternary operator, which lets you put a conditional in a line of code and it automatically will handle if it's true or false. Well, not automatically, but you tell it what you want it to do if it's true or false. So if selected date equals equals date, that means we want our text to be white. So you do, after this, you do a question mark and then you do dot white else. So if it's not equal to date, we want blue. All right, hit command B and this errors will go away. Now we refresh the preview. All right, there we go, there we go. The next thing we need to do is we're missing this next. So where are we going to put this? So we're still going to be in this for each uh, loop, but actually I want to cut out this button and, or we could just, you could cut it out or you could highlight our command click on it and embed it in an H stack because what we're going to have to do is if you select on a date, we're going to want an H stack with the date or the time and the next op, uh, button. All right, so underneath the button, we're gonna create a conditional called if selected date equals equals date. Oh, it looks like my Xcode is throwing a random bug where I don't have that much um, auto completion features. Yep, but I'll continue. So if selected date equals equals date, we want a button to show up and actually we don't want just a button to show up because if we go back to our Calendly, we click on it and you see this next here, it actually lets us navigate to a different view. So that's the behavior we want. So let's change this to a navigation link, destination and label, destination, empty view, and the text will be next. And again, this is going to be bold and we'll want to add some padding. You want a frame of dot. You want a frame max width. Oh, max width of dot infinity. And we want a background. In this background, we'll call a rounded rectangle. We can just copy this. And this actually is a foreground color of dot blue. And we can actually just test this out now. So boom, there we go. And we need to add a foreground color to our text of dot white. Boom, look at that. That is nice. And Xcode handles the animation for us. Love it. You got to love it. You got to love it. 
And if we hit next, we navigate. Hey. Fire. All right. So we got this set up. And what happens when we click? So we go to a next view. Let's work on this view right now, actually. Let's set up the UI for this view. So I'm going to minimize this. We're going to go to right click here, new file, Swift UI view. And I like to call this booking view since we're going to be booking our call here. And in here, we'll have a V stack. And what else? So again, we have the title here. So we can. Let me put this in a navigation stack. And let's put a navigation title of Calend Calendly course. That's about Calendly, right? Yep. <laughs> you gotta be you gotta be sure. Anyway, did I what do we want in our view? So the first thing we want, so I'm going to create another V stack for just for these images, because this, if you look at this, it's basically just a V stack of H stacks. You see here, we have the, the duration, the location and the time. And again, we're not worried about time zone. So the first H stack is going to be time. So let's call image system name. Let's go look at what we have to work with. Let's do clock. Do we have any? Oh, there we go. Clock. We can call this one. Although, is there any other nice clocks? You can play around with these. So we'll call clock. Text. 30 min. There we go. And let's put a frame max width dot infinity max height dot infinity alignment dot top there we go there we go and for this v stack i want to create some custom spacing actually for this v stack i want to bring in alignment and spacing so alignment when you ha when you're hovering over this Press on option on your keyboard and hit enter. We're going to do dot leading and a spacing of 16. Let's do top leading here. There we go. I believe that gets rid of the need for this. And we'll add some padding to this entire V stack. And now I'm just going to copy and paste this three more times. All right, so the first thing we need, the 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 second one is, I believe we should have a FaceTime or a camera thing. Yeah, video. So we'll just do video. And since we are Apple developers, FaceTime. <laughs> FaceTime. Oh, and I don't like that padding or that, that difference. All right, so you see, this is, uh, this is doing this because we need to, actually bring in the alignment for our V stack and we need dot leading. Boom. This looks good. FaceTime. And now we need this one, which should be calendar. And is there a nicer calendar? I guess we'll go with that calendar. And this has a time, a start date. This has a lot. <laughs> so let's just write down. Let's actually wait. We can copy this. We don't have to break our backs. There we go. Perfect. If we want, we get a little bit more spacing. And then underneath all this stuff, we want a divider and then we want a text. Enter details, font, large title. And this is bold. Actually, this is title, not large title. Sorry. And we want to add an alignment on this as well. Actually dot leading. 
Boom. And let's embed this in a VStack as well, since this stuff is fairly similar. And in t on this VStack, we can add padding. So I'm going to do text name. Oh. Text of name. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just do the text for now, and then email, and then another text. Please share this. So, paste that in there. And now we need to create our text fields. Text field for this one: title, key, and text. The title key is they don't have a they don't have a placeholder, so you could just leave this empty. And it looks like we'll need to create some state vars. So at state var and we should be able yeah, we should call these private private name equals this at state var or private var email equals this at state private var. I'm gonna call this last one notes. This one is name. We can just copy this, paste it here. This is email. This is notes. Now underneath this, we have a button with an action on a label. The text is schedule event. S C H. All right, there we go. <laughs> I wasn't just checking if this was spelled correctly. <laughs> All right, what do we need to do? Oh, we need to change this alignment to dot leading. And I'm going to close this. Let's add some spacing of like six, six to 12. Give us a little bit of breathing room. Can we do 16? Just a little bit more. There we go. All right. So for this, I'm going to do dot. We add some padding. Then we add a background. And then this background, we add a rounded rectangle radius 10. And you just want to stroke it. <laughs> you just want to call it stroke. And boom, that looks nice. That looks nice. So we're going to copy this and just call that for the other ones. And for this notes text field, actually, I want to see if I can, I want to add one more thing called axis dot vertical. What this is going to allow us to do is you see for this email, <laughs> you see me typing like crazy. So for this text field, everything's one line, right? But for notes, maybe somebody has a lot they want to add. We're going to do multi-line and that's what that axis lets us do. Because typically for name and email, you don't have a very long name or email. <laughs> I mean, if you do, it's fine, it's fine, but just generally speaking, you don't. So we don't want that behavior for these except for this one. On the button text, we need to do a few things. We, actually, we can kind of copy what we did here because this is a similar pattern for adding this background. The one thing we need to do is we need to change the max width to dot infinity. Boom, it blows it up. One thing I want to add to is a spacer to shift this all the way to the bottom. Don't stroke the rounded rectangle. Instead, we call foreground color of dot blue, which I think by default on a button, it's going to be blue. If I'm, yeah, by default on the button is blue. But I don't want to rely on by default. And we need a foreground color of dot white. 
And I believe it's bold, right? Yep. So let's bold it and let's move this horizon color up here. Boom. All right, this looks pretty good if you ask me. Is there anything else we're missing? Let's look at the behavior that happens when I schedule an actual meeting. All right, so I filled this out. Now I'm gonna schedule the event just to see what behavior we get. So we basically just get sent to a confirmation page and that's the next view we're gonna be working to. And we're not even sent there, technically speaking, because it kind of just appears on top of it, right? But instead of just presenting a full screen cover, we're still gonna navigate, but we're gonna remove the navigation bar. And we're gonna incorporate popping back to the root view or the home view. So that means that this will have to be changed to a navigation link. Navigation link. And again, we're going to refactor our implementation of navigation link. I'm just implementing it like this for now. And now we navigate to an empty view. Cool. And the last thing we'll do is the last view we need to create is the confirmation view, confirmation view. Make sure it's a Swift UI view. And this is a V stack. And I'm going to do something. So you guys see, we have a V stack and we can actually, let's hide the canvas since So we have a V stack with an image. I have an image saved as JSON. I actually just updated it, but it's still, I still have an image in my assets. Underneath this image, we have a text called confirm. And for this image, we actually need to make it resizable. We'll call scale to fill frame. Do 128, 128. And let's say you don't have a circular image, then you can call corner radius of 64 on it. Command B, all right, the arrow goes away. This is font title and we want to bold it. And we can also create some padding on it. And then we have a text. Here, we can just copy this so we don't have to, or I don't have to type it. Then we have a divider. And it looks like this divider has some padding to it since it's not fully, actually looks like the whole view has some padding to it. So I'm just gonna add padding to the, the view. All right, underneath this, we have, we have, looks like a few H stacks. So, H stack, this is pretty much a circle. And I went with a dot frame of 28 by 28 and you can adjust the color of it by just changing the foreground color. We'll go with blue. And the text here is meeting. Let's just do meeting. Actually, I believe we've just been saying Calendly course. So we'll do that. Now we have another H stack and I'm not gonna copy and paste since it's Fairly different. This one is using, we can actually go to our booking view. This one's using this. Actually, we need both of these. So paste that here. And now let's look at how this looks. because we're not going to copy any of the other stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. And let's call frame max height dot infinity. 
actually, this is going to be called from a navigation stack. So let's do that. First, now we call max height dot infinity alignment dot top. So it looks like we want some, we want different behavior for this. So for this bottom part, we want it to the alignment to be leading for the top part. We want the alignment to be centered. So cut this out and create a V stack, bring in the alignment dot leading. And we paste that. Let's create some spacing 24. Let's do a lot more 32. And let's add some padding to this. There we go. I like it. I like it. The last thing we're missing is a button to go back to the home. So let's create a button, no action, text, call it done. And what do we need to do? We need to do padding. We need a foreground color dot white frame max width dot infinity. And we need a background, the back crown rounded rectangle corner radius of 10 by default is blue but you never want to rely on default <laughs> and I believe we want it bold boom fire so we're about to try to run this we're about to run this on our device but we actually need to set up the navigation so for the navigation, so in our content view, I'm going to refactor this name to home. In our home view, what do we want? So in our home view, we are going to navigate to the day view. And from the day view, where do we want to navigate to? From the day view, we navigate to the booking view. And from the booking view, we navigate to the confirmation view. And again, this is not our concrete implementation. We're not even done yet. This is just setting up our UI so we can see how this looks. All right. so. Our app loads up. We're still, it's still working because we're not able to navigate on days. We have no appointments, quote unquote. We go to here. These all work. The next navigation works. And we haven't handled any form validation, but if we hit schedule event, we get confirmed. So this is set. The next thing I want to do, what well, we don't, <laughs> you see here we're, on this, we're supposed to pop to the root view. But we're not there yet. The first thing I want to do is I want to go through and actually set up a little bit more UI because right now we just hard coded all this stuff. We actually need to do is we need to initialize some of these views with the given date. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's stop running this. Go to our day view. Here at the top, we just want to create a var, call it current date. And this will be a type date. It doesn't have to be state because this won't be changing. All right. So we're going to, so we should get some issues now. Yeah, we're missing this in our preview. We can just initialize it with date. And when we called it as well. And this is when we would use the power of it because we would pass in value dot date. Now for our day view, we just need to refresh this preview. All right, so now we, from this current day, we're gonna have to extract some information and format it to look like this. So let's go to our date extension and let's do that. And I'm gonna move this. 
this. So this, uh, let's move that over here. And we're going to have a lot of formats in this project. This one is going to be funk full month, day, year format. This returns a string. And we're going to copy this. There's uh, some changes we need to do because we need to add the date here. All we need to do is add the day here. And we can actually, let's add some comments here because this is a little confusing. Returns 2023. This one will return the date as 0823323. This one will return August 2023. All right, so now that we have our extensions, we can just call date dot for month, day, year format. Refresh that. Oh, and this is current date. <laughs> so we change it to current date, 26. All right, so we just need one more thing here. You see, we have the date at the top and that's the navigation title. And we actually need to create one more, one more here, funk day of the week. This was gonna return a string. I'm going to copy this in here, paste that, and we just changed the date format to E, 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 E. And that'll give us the day of the week. Again, for, for date extensions, you don't have to be a master and remember all this. This is just something you need to use every now and then. Chat GPT is a great resource. Google, of course. And I believe there's a website. I forgot. The name of it but there's a website as well the 23rd was a wednesday so this actually i don't know why i put ex here so i'm gonna remove this ex we can remove the colon too actually so let's return a day as Monday, Tuesday, etc. All right. Now we can call this in our day view. We can call it date. No, current date. Current day dot day of the week. Now we're using today's date, so that's why it comes out as Saturday, because today is the 26th and it is Saturday. If you want to test it on a different day, you can just copy one of these actually. And boom. Let's see, hit this so it refreshes. Oh, we need to change this to day though. <laughs> there we go. Now this is on a Tuesday in the future. Probably in the past by the time you're watching this. All right, so we set it up for this one. Now we need to set it up for the next view. So close day, what's after day, booking. Now in the booking view, we're gonna update this for the current date. So that would be here. And we can call, well, first we need to initialize the date. So we just call var current date. And this is gonna be an optional day or actually not optional, but 
just a date. Command B and we'll get some errors. And we just insert the fix. Put today's date. Hit Command B. All right. This is basically just going to be current date. And we want to set it equal to selected date. Actually, we can just set it equal to date. Refresh this. All right. And now we have access to the current date. So let's do some string interpolation. Current date dot. Four month day year. That gives us a day's date. Hmm. And it looks like the best way to go about this actually is to create an extension on date that will give us this fully string. So let's let's do something. So I'm gonna close the canvas. We're going to open extension here and let's say funk. Let's just call this booking view date format. Since this is a very specific formatting that we're going to need for this string or for this date. So let's see, what should we bring in first? So we're going to say, let's start equal this. So now we have the start and to get the end date. So let's see end time. Let end time equal format. Wait, actually no, it's going to equal calendar dot current dot date by adding value to. So we're going to add minutes, 30 minutes to self. Force unwrap this. Now we have the start and the end time. But we don't have the end time formatted correctly. So now we need another. Well, actually, we can use this. We're going to be using multiple formatters. So. Let's change this to time formatter. Time formatter, time formatter. And let's change this to end date. Let end equal time formatter dot string from start. Actually, we change this to string from M date. Now we have the end date or the end time, sorry. So we have this and we have this. Now we need the date. We can just call let day equal self dot day of week. Okay. Let for date string equal self dot full month day year format. Call that. I'm um, going to just copy this since autocomplete is not working. And then we can return. We can return a string. Let's use string interpolation. So we're going to have the start. And then we're going to have the end. Then we have a comma. Then we have the day. 
then we have another comma and then we have just the full date string hit command B and I'm gonna cut this underneath and let's put this here day as All right, so now let's close this and let's go to our booking view. And we should be able to call current date dot booking view date format. Let's open up the canvas, refresh it, and boom. We see we have the start, the end date, 30 minutes after, the day of the week, and time. We can align this to the top. I believe this will make it look nicer. Yep, we can align it to the top. Looks better. All right, so the next thing we navigate to is a confirmation view. So let's look at that. So for here, we also need a current date. Var current date is of type date. And now we're missing this down here. Just pass in the date. Command B. We're missing it in here. We can just pass in current date. And refresh this. You see it has Tuesday, but if we do current date dot booking view date, we get this alignment dot top. To fix that and all right, so it shows up with the current date in the 30 minutes. All right. Now we can go back to our home view and I actually want to change these greater than or equal to to circle dot fill. I feel like it looks a lot nicer. This one will do circle dot fill. Change it to 32 by 32. All right. And let's run this on the device. Boom, boom, du, 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 du. and we can hit schedule event and this pops up. All right, so let's bring in Superbase. Let's do that. So if you guys are not familiar with Superbase, Superbase is a Firebase alternative. They allow us, they pretty much give us like free database, user authentication and what else, storage similar to Firebase if you guys have ever worked with it. It's an open source alternative, so you don't have to worry about Google keeping your stuff, <laughs> right? And I like using it for some of my projects. I know so, some of the, some it doesn't have as much features as Firebase, but it still works really well in some use cases. If you see here, they have the database, the storage, authentication, they even have functions and a real-time database. Make sure you guys create an account and it's free. You can have as many projects as you want. You can only have two active projects at a time though. So what we're gonna do is you, you're gonna create an account and then we hit a new project, choose your organization, project name, Callen Lee, and just put some random password and select your region, whichever is closest to you, create the new project, give it a second to set up. And now I'm gonna create a file, Swift file called database manager and in here this will be a class database manager we will call this we'll make this a singleton static let shared equal database manager private init 
Let's go back to Superbase. It looks like our stuff is ready. All right, so in our database manager, this is what we're going to be using to interact with Superbase. Before we do so, we need to actually bring in Superbase. To actually work with Superbase Swift, we need to bring in that library. Oh, that was me. <laughs> and they have a GitHub repo here. And Superbase Swift is officially only supported by the Superbase community. Hopefully, Superbase will bring in official support very soon. But all right, so we're going, so you make sure you get to GitHub, copy this, and go back to our project. Now we're going to add the package. Add it here and hit add package. Give it a second. It's going to bring everything we need in. All right, we hit add package. Now we should be able to import Superbase. Now we can create a client, and this should be a private. Let client equal Superbase client. Superbase URL, Superbase key, this one. The URL will be URL from string. And what string do we need? So we need to go to our Superbase, go to your project settings, go to API. This is what we need. So right here, make sure you just copy that. Paste that string in here. And you want to force and wrap it because the URL will be optional. And then for the key, we take this one and we paste it in here. All right, so now we have Superbase integrated into our project. Now let's go to the table editor. Well, let's go to a database. We need to create some tables. So if you guys are unfamiliar with Superbase, it's a Postgres database, which is like a relational database. And, and it's a little bit different from Firebase. Like if you're coming from Firebase, Firebase is a collection or document database. And Superbase is all about tables. So you can think about it like that. It's all about tables and relationships between tables and items or rows in those tables. And for our use case, I'm going to create two tables, but you would generally want, I would say you'd probably want three, but we're just going to do two. And why three? And I'm saying generally three for our use case. Because, let me just create the first one. So the first one is going to be hours. And the way I set up the database is one table is going to tell us the available hours during the week. So this table here, and we're going to disable row level security, by the way. So anybody can read this. But this table, I'm going to create a day. And this is going to be an int. And it shouldn't matter which int you go with. And for the int, that's going to be the index of the day of the week. The ints will range from 0 to 6, and those will be the days of the week. I'm going with 0 as Monday and Sunday as 6, or 6 as Sunday. You guys can change that, but keep in mind that it's going to change how you implement it in our Xcode project. And then what I did was I created a start and an end int. And what these are doing is it's going to tell us a start and end time of when we want people to be able to book appointments. So it's basically like your hours of operation. Like you're open from one from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., right? And we go with int. And this is goes from 0 to 23, which signifies the 24 hours in a day. And we save that. Next is a table of appointments. For appointments, we want to get rid of role level security. We want to add some columns. So we want the person's name, which is going to be a text. So look for a text. It should be right there. We want an email. It should be right here. And we want a date, which will be the date of the appointment. And we want time, z st time stamp Z, which is includes a time zone because that'll be important. All right. So with the name, the email, and the date, we have this. Now this will be, that's all we need to set an appointment. So we're going to hit save. And now I'm going to go here to the table editor. 
So here in the table editor for hours, I'm gonna, now going to enter in all the hours of operation for each day. And it makes a lot more sense to do it here since this is just a one-time thing. And every time we load up our app, we're going to fetch from here. So it just makes a lot more sense to just add it from here. And the ID, this, you can leave it blank. Um, Superbase will handle it for us. Day zero, which is Monday. Let's say we start at eight and end at four. I had to do math for <laughs> the 24 hour clock because we don't use military time in the US. That's what we call it. All right, so the index now, so for Monday or for Tuesday, let's say we start at nine and I'm just gonna fill these up. You guys can enter in whichever times you want. This is Saturday. I I go with zero zero if it's closed or we don't do anything. That's the logic I implemented. All right, so now we have the seven days of the week, and we can we can actually try to fetch this in our project. So let's call the funk fetch. Hours. We call it async throws. And in here we can call a client database from the table is ours. We just want to call select and execute. And if we got if we go back, we see that execute returns us a response. So let response equal Fly away, command B. And we can grab the data from the response as response dot underline response dot data. And we can print the data, but we actually want to print it and string this one. UTF-8, this is a little cheat code I use sometimes. You can easily just print it in your terminal. And we're not going to see this actually because we're not calling it. But let's do it here on our home. So underneath here, let's create a task. And this task will be database manager share dot fetch hours. And oh, we need to call try await. And we should probably wrap this in a do catch. Because if we get an error, we can actually see what it is if we print it. And we just write try away. Run this. Boom. It's fetching the data. That means it's working, at least, right? Now we have to decode this. Mumbo jumbo. But you see here we get an ID. It created at a... This is just a timestamp. This is a day, start, and an end. Boom, perfect. So let's go to database now, or let's go to, yeah, let's go to back to our manager. And one thing to note too is the created act using snake case. That's what this is, <laughs> I had to think for a second. This is using snake case, so we're gonna have to let our, cause we we're gonna have a decoder, right? Cause when you decode your JSON, you, you could use JSON decoder, but we need the decoding strategy to be convert from snake case. Now we can create a struct for hours. And this will have to be decodable and only decodable because we only are going to read this. We're never going to send off hours. If you are going to implement that, then you would change this to codable. So what do we need? We need to create it at. This is a string. We also need a date. A day, which is an int, a start, which is an int, 
and an n, which is an int. All right, and now we can try decoder, decode. This is an array of hours. Dot self. So we actually want to decode an array of the hours. Because if you see here, this is in an array from the data, and this would actually be hours. So now let's print hours and run it. And if we go here to our terminal, boom! It's printed out really nicely, and we get the IDs, and we get the day, and the start time, and the end time. Perfect. And we can just have this return an array of hours. Now we'll have to we can just discard discard this response. Now in our database manager, I'm going to create a function called fetch available appointments. Appointments. And this will be async throws. All right, so for this function, we're going to be using it to actually fetch what appointment times are available. And there's going to be a few steps involved in this. So first, the first step we're going to have to do is actually fetch what appointments are not available. And this is just the this is just the way I decided to go about building out the database. And there's probably other ways you could have you could do this. But I found this to be the most straightforward and uh, easiest to implement. All right, so we're going to get a response here of appointments. And we can copy this part. And it's going to be very similar to this, actually. So we're going to do something very similar, except this is not going to be hours, right? This is going to be an appointment. An appointment is going to be decodable. And what is the appointment going to have? So it's going to have these. What else will it have? It's going to have a name, which will be a string. It's going to have a email, which is a string. And it's going to have a appointment. And we can actually just call this date, which is a date. And let me lowercase this, command B. We can actually get rid of this extra stuff, but we'll have to create an enum for coding keys. And this will be type string and coding key. And the case is going to be created at, set this equal to created underscore at. Now we can, all right. Now we can uh, we can remove this, and if we put dot value, hit command B, we'll get an error, and we need to declare the type here, and we'll declare it as an array of hours, and we can test this if we run our simulator, and we should print our response actually. So let's run this and we'll have to make this codable since we're using the coding keys. And the last thing we missed is we need to add start and the command B. This will let us know that these are just regular or these are just the default ones. And for the created app, we'll have to decode it like this. So let's open up the simulator. Oh, actually, no, wait, right here. Boom, and this cleans up our code quite a bit. And we can do the same here. And instead of this, we just change this to name. The downside of this is we have to make this codable, which is not a big downside. And it's actually, I would say it's worth it. 
All right, so we can get rid of this stuff again. And we call dot value and this will be appointments. And we can remove this. Declare this as an array of a type appointment. And we can return appointment. Oh, and we have to make this function return appointments. So base, we're not even going to return these actually. So <laughs> let me remove this line because based on these appointments, these are the, going to be the time slots that are already bugged. And we're going to have to create a function that's going to take that time slot or take these time slots and generate a, an array of available appointments or dates. This isn't even correct because we don't want to return an array of appointments. We want to just return an array of dates and this, these dates or this array of date will be time slots, which are going to be of type date. And those time slots will be the ones that we can choose from in our Calendly app. So what's the function we're going to do? We're going to have the function call it generate appointment times from an array of appointments. And we can call this appointments. And then based off of this, this is going to be async throws. You see why in a second. Based off this, we can return an array of date here. So what do we need to do in this function? So we actually need to call this one fetch hours because we need to know what hours of operation are available. So we're going to say let hours, we're going to call let hours equal try await fetch hours. Now we have the available hours that were open. And what I want to do is I want to take this array of appointments that we have here. And I'm actually going to create a set. So taking appointments, this is going to be a set of type date. So we're going to create a set of type date and why a set and not an array? Because for a set, it's going to remove duplicates. And it's also going to allow us to easily search for items in it and insert items if we need to. So to do this, we're going to create a set and then we just call appointments dot map and we call it curly braces dollar sign zero dot date and let me just return an empty array here return an empty array here all right and you guys may have noticed or be thinking why we're going to be fetching an array of appointments so this is technically not the best way you would want to do it because we would the user or the app would be fetching everyone's appointment and you really want it you really want to want to do that because in the appointment you have like names and uh, emails so the correct or the best way if you're going to do this in production would probably be to have in a table that just has dates and those dates would be the taken dates and you would fetch those based on those you would uh, generate the available appointment dates but we're using it this way just so we don't have to create an extra table all right now we're going to create a calendar reference here since we're going to use calendar dot current quite a bit and we're going to create a variable called current weekday and here we'll reference calendar component and the component will be day from date minus two all right, this is being created to take into account our indexes for the appointment or for the hours. You remember we here in this index, we have Monday at zero, Tuesday at one, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to use this to take into, to take that into account. All right, so now we're going to create a for loop. So for hour in hours, and can we get autocomplete? There we go. So we're going to get it. This is going to loop through all the hours, which is basically each day of the week and the available hours we have for people to book appointments. And I added one conditional, which is if hour dot start is not equal to zero and hour dot end is not equal to zero because this was our case of close basically. So if this is not the case, so if it's not closed or we don't have, um, 
So if we're open today, we're going to want to create a variable, call it current date. And in here we'll call calendar. We need to call calendar dot date from, and we need to create a date component and we need to call this and we need to bring in day. So we'll call calendar dot component from, so the day from day plus hour dot day minus current weekday. And this will give us the date that we're actually looking for. And you'll see this in a second. So let me see. We need one more thing. We need to bring in the hour. So we need to bring an hour and the hour is going to be hour dot start. And now we need another loop because we're going to have to generate these dates or an array of days. So this current date here, so this is grabbing the date from today's date. It's going to, this manipulation here is going to shift it to whichever date is in the hour date. Because if you guys remember, hour is, has a day here, a day index, which is an int. And that lets us know whether we're on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Sunday, right? So this shift here takes that into account. And it'll create it for that given date. And now we need to actually create a while loop. And we need to while at next date equals calendar.date. By adding value to, we're going to add minute to value of the value. Actually, the value is 30 and the time is current date. We also need to check that the calendar dot component from if the hour from this next date, we have to check that the hour is less than hour dot end. Because if it's greater than or equal to, we are at the end point and we want to stop this loop. But if we're not there and we're still in this loop, what do we want to do? We basically want to append this, append the, the date to an array. And that means we're going to have to create an array. We call it time slots. And it can be an empty array of type date. And there's just going to be one more conditional. We have to check that taking appointments doesn't contain next date. And this will have to be a, you add an exclamation point to make sure it's a not, so it does not contain. Otherwise it, it basically is going to check if it, if it does contain. So while this, is this optional? Yep. So we need to force unwrap this and this should not fail. So in this contain, let's make sure we do current date because if we do next date, we already going to, we're going to skip one. We're going to skip this. Basically we're going to skip the first hour of each day that has an available appointment. So we want that. And we need also need to add one more conditional, which takes into account that our current date is greater than right now, because otherwise you'd, we could possibly be showing appointment dates of the past and you wouldn't want that. So if the, if these are true, then we want to call time slots append the current date. And then after this, we can set current date equals next date. Hit command B, see if we have any issues. All right. And after all this happens, we can return this array of time slots. Ooh, that's a lot of code, right? That's a lot of code. Hit command B. And now we would call try away, generate appointment times from appointments. Command B. So to test this, we're going to call available appointments here and let's print appointments. One thing before we run our, we run this on our devices. We actually need to change this to weekday. I notice because if we go with day identifier for the unit day, we actually want to get the day of the week. So do weekday. Now we run this. And you get an empty array. Huh. So here we're fetching available appointments. I see the issue. So, so I was trying to run this and I noticed for our date, we actually need to signify the year and the month we want to use. So 
for the year we call it calendar component from component so year from date and this is all we'll have to do and we'll have to do the same thing for month so for month we call it calendar component month from date hit command B this succeeds now if we go to our home view and we have this in here all right available appointments and we can run this now if you see here our dates are lining up correctly and we are on the 26 so I was having an issue right because let me just print this current day and you'll see why we were having an issue so we run our project and we were actually fetching the dates but you see here we were fetching the 21st, 26th, and I'm filming this on the 26th, which is a Saturday. So this is fetching the appointments for this past week or current week, to be honest, but it's Saturday and there are no available appointments on Saturday and Sunday, the way we set it up. So that's why there was nothing being returned. But to account for that, we can remove this or move this in a for loop for week offset in zero dot dot one dot dot one and we just paste this in here and then we need to add just one more thing call it days to we'll call this days offset equals week offset times seven and we will call that right here. And now this is going to check for appointments this week and the next week. So if we run this, I'm printing it, right? Yep. If we run this, we should get an array of available dates for next week. Where's time slots? Oh, we need to move this into our for loop or outside of our for loop. So now we run this. And boom, we get a big array of dates. Not that big, but decent size. And if you look through these, it's gonna show us the available appointments for the following week. And you see they're in like 30 minute intervals, which is really good. And a neat thing is we can play around with this and we can set the calendar available for the next four weeks, basically four weeks ahead. So it would always be four weeks ahead on the app. This way keeps it always two weeks ahead. So if you're on like a Saturday or Sunday, like I am now, it wouldn't just show empty. All right. So this is set. Now we got to figure out how we want to implement this in our project. So since we're not going to be using MVVM or an architecture like that, we can actually create this as an observable object and we can kind of use like an MV pattern with this so we would not i'll keep it as a singleton for now but we may not even need this actually we won't need this and what i'll do is make this an observable object and i'm just going to create a publish var called appointments appointments which will be an array of date actually we're just going to call this available date since i don't want it to be confusing and based on this, in this array, we're going to have this array of available appointments. And there's actually one more thing I want to create, or another publish var, which is available days. And this is going to be a string or a set of string. And we'll set it empty for now. And in here, we're just... We're basically just going to filter through this array and grab the dates. And this should be a colon. And we're going to use this for in Calendly. You guys remember how we highlight which days are have appointments? That's what we're going to use this publish var for. And in our initialization, we can call a task with a do catch block and now we can call dates so let dates equal try away self dot fetch actually it's not even fetch it's uh what is it 
we should call this fetch actually fetch available appointments and let's remove this from here let's just get rid of this task all right so now we have the dates and we're going to make updates to our publish var. So we're going to have to dispatch to the main queue. We could also say await main actor dot run. That's another way of doing that. What do we want to do? We want to set available dates equal to dates and for available days. We can just set this to days equal to be honest. So for days, we're going to take this array and map it to, and I believe, do we have date format? Let's go to our extension, date extension. Do we have, let's see what, there's month, day, year format. Let's go with that one. Month day year format function produces I'm confused oh there we go <laughs> and this needs to be wrapped as a set and what this set does it removes the duplicates for us super helpful and we can just print error dot localize description hit command B and now we can use this. So let's remove this print. We don't have any other prints, right? So now we can call this. If we go to our home view, we can actually create a state object here. Call this manager equal to database manager, command B. And now we are going to have to make some changes in here, in this logic. Because right now, we're the, <laughs> the conditional we had was we were just using odd and even numbers. So we're going to have to update our conditional. And let's see if we can just create it here. So let create this has appointments. And this will be equal to manager dot available dates contains and it would have to contain value dot date and actually not even available dates. We just have to call days as day or month. This one, right? Yep. I believe this is the one we went with month. We can check in our database. We went with month, day, year format month, day, year format. So has appointments, has appointments, has appointments, has appointments. Disable if does not have appointments. So we just use the, the uh, exclamation point. Now let's try to run this and see what happens. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We get these. And that's pretty dope because that means it's working. <laughs> Lit. Now we got to set up our, our, what do you call it? our navigation here. So we need to pass value dot date. So, and what we want to actually do is we want to go to our day view and we're going to have to pass in the manager here, the database manager as a observable or as an environment object. So we bring in our environment object and we're going to have to make some changes. So, let me just remove all this mock data. And we're still going to have an array of dates. But on a peer of this view, we are going to do some filtering because we're going to change our dates. 
because our manager, like let's go, let's go right here. So in our manager, we have available dates with basically just an array of a whole bunch of dates. But we're gonna wanna filter. And we're gonna wanna filter the current value dot, or the current value is the date. So we wanna make that equal to, and actually we're gonna do month, day, year format, this one. We want that equal to current date dot month, date, year format. And this formatting helps us take into account the different hours, right? Because if you just did the date comparison, it would be off because this date would just be the current time and the dates wouldn't exactly be aligned. But what this strings are doing is it makes the comparison very simple because it's just gonna compare the date as a string. And we're gonna set this equal to, what did we call it, dates? Hit command B. All right, and let's run the app and see if this works. All right, it's loading. Now let's go to Wednesday. And this doesn't work and I realize why because we need to add the environment object here. Sometimes I forget and that's what happens when you forget the environment object, your app just crashes. All right, let's go back to Wednesday and oh, that looks really good. Let's see. Aha. And if I go to Wednesday, is so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 10 to 12. So this looks pretty accurate. Although, where is 1130? Ah, uh, it looks like we have an issue in our database manager. We're not adding the final 30 minutes. Let's see. So to fix that, we just need to change this to an equal. And let's see what happens. Boom. And I believe now we create another bug. <laughs> Which, and this way, this is, might be a bug or might not be a bug, depending on, so if in our, in our table, our end time for Friday is two o'clock. So we shouldn't have an appointment here. So if, and we can just add a conditional here. So we can check that the current date dot, if we can add a calendar component, component from if the hour from our current date does not equal hour dot end. Let's see. Boom, this stops at 3.30 on a Monday and on Monday, what do we have? Yep, we end at four. All right, so now we're good to go. We set up our dates. Let's go to Monday. And we have 8 a.m. is right. Let's see. Yep, 8 a.m. looks good. What happens if we hit next? Nothing happens. Oh, no. This does work. And oh, look. This is correct. Let's go back. Let's go to Wednesday. Let's see if this shows up correctly. It does. Dope. Now we need to see what we're going to do when we schedule our event. This looks really good, although nothing is being sent to the back end. And this, we need some form validation here because... If I have this empty, then <laughs> then it's just empty and it still goes through. So that shouldn't happen. So let's go. We got to stop this simulator. Let's close these. And that's in our booking view. And in here, I want to refactor this into a button. So I'm going to change this into a button. You'll see one in a second. And in this button, we can add some conditional. So if names is empty and email is empty. And we, I put the exclamation point to make sure it's not empty. Because if you only want to do this if it's not empty, and we don't care about the notes, it can be empty or not. So if it's not empty, we want to actually create a task. 
And that task is going to be posting the appointment to our database so that our database can know and it can be scheduled basically. So we actually have to go back to our database manager. We're going to have to create a function. So we can do that down here. We'll call this function post appointment. We can call it book appointment as well. Book appointment appointment. And we have a name of type string, an email of type string, and notes of type string. This will be async throw since this is making a network request. And we are going to be making the post to this table. So I'm going to copy this beginning. What we need to do is insert values. And the value is going to be an appointment. Um, what do we want this appointment to be? If you guys remember, we change, we can change this to date. We can change this to date. Let's see if that changes anything in our project. I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to run this. All right, this still works. So we're going to change this to date. And we're going to make this an optional. And now we can actually create an appointment. Appointment equal appointment from ID is optional. We'll take today's date, the name, the email, and we need to pass in the date for this appointment. So date. Hit command B and we can post this appointment. It's making us, we can just call this. Actually, I know why it's doing that is we need to change it to a var. There we go. So this is going to be just a response. And we can throw away the response, to be honest. And this is not an asynchronous because we have to call execute now it's going to be an asynchronous call and we would call that in here and we need access to the manager so we need an environment object var manager equal to database manager hit command b now we'll call actually we need to call try await manager dot book appointment or name, email, notes, and it's current date. Okay. This looks good. What else are we missing? Are we missing anything? I want to do something. I want to make this private so we don't have access to it from outside of this. We can make this private as well. And actually we can pro we can make all of these private. Since we don't want anybody to access this, this shouldn't give us any errors. Boom. Now we can run this. And if you guys notice something we may be missing is we need to call pass this environment object since that we created. And if you forget, it happens, and Xcode will tell you right away that you forgot it because your app will crash. <laughs> let's go to Wednesday. It's a it's a light day, and let's let's try to book an appointment at eleven thirty. And actually, let's go to my database. So this is the database. We're at Wednesday, so it's from ten to twelve, and that's the correct yep, correct things and our appointments. We have no appointments. Let's hit next. And if I try to schedule the event, nothing happens. Because we're not meeting the requirements. Basically, this is not empty. So let's see who wants to schedule an appointment with me. Let's do 
Mazin. Shout out to Mazin. He was on the recent episode of the I Was Dead podcast. Mazin at Gmail. I need help. Hello. The days are looking good. We picked 1130 and it's on a Wednesday. Yep. And if we hit schedule event, what happens? Let's look here. Hey, it posted. And now we need to update our UI. So when we post it, when we're posting from the booking, so when this is posted, we want to reset the name and we want to reset the email. Also the notes. So you want to reset this and we want to present the navigation. And now we're actually going to take a break from this and work on the navigation because this isn't the best way to handle navigation. And navigation is a little tricky, especially coming from UI kit where we had full control of where we wanted to go, right? Like I could go anywhere I wanted to. <laughs> But in Swift UI, we have navigation stack. Navigation stack is actually pretty, it's pretty cool. It just takes some time to get used to. And I'm, I myself, I'm still getting used to it, but the more I play with it, the more I learn. So for our navigation, we need to create a new file. And this is gonna be our router. And I like to call it app router because it's what's gonna handle all of our routing in our app. And it's, it's what's gonna allow us to pop to the root view, which is a dope, thing that I learned how to do recently and I kind of love it because <laughs> before I was so confused on how the heck I could go from deep into a navigation stack back to the root. All right, so how does this work? So we need to create a router which is which conforms to type hashable. And in this router, we basically need to create all the cases of the view that we want. So we need a view for the day and we actually want to initialize that view with a variable of type day. So you want to, you want to explicitly say that in your enum. And we also need to do the same for booking. And the last one is our confirmation because we are navigating with that. All right, hit command B and you shouldn't get any errors. But now that we solidified all the destinations that we're going to, we go back to our home view and here we call navigation destination or we call app router dot self. We call router and we basically just switch over the router. Sometimes this will autofill. Let's see. Nope. And if it doesn't, you just have to call the cases. So the first case is of day and we can just say let date these and you can actually copy and paste this since the only thing that's going to change is booking and confirmation. So for each of these cases, this is where you actually write the view that you want to show. So we want to show the day view and the current date that we have to pass and there's the date that's going to be given to us. And you'll see in a second how we're passing that date actually. And we're just going to do the same for booking. We don't have the manager here since we're passing it as an environment object. And this last one is a confirmation view. And this one doesn't need an environment object. And now the next thing we need to bring in is we actually need to bring in a path for our navigation stack. And this is how Swift UI lets us navigate. So another state var. Now we actually can just call this path and this equals navigation path. And we can make these private, make all of these private, private var. All right. 
And we need to bind the path to this navigation stack. Boom. All right, now we're almost done with this view. The last thing we'll need to do is we need to change our implementation here. So instead of using the navigation link like we are here, we can use value and label. All right, so for the value here, we actually need to call our app router dot, and then you call whichever one you are going, whichever destination we're going to. So in here, we're in home, so we're going to the day. And we'll pass the date from this value that we have up here. That'll be this one. And we can just copy the label we have in here, paste that in there. We can copy this, paste that in there, and we can get rid of this code. Hit Command B. Boom, this loads. And now we can run this, and let's see what happens. We go to Monday, and hey, this is working. So that means that this navigation link is actually working, which is pretty cool. And now let's go one layer into our navigation, which is in the day view. And let's change our implementation here. So this needs to be a navigation link with a value and a destination, the value, app router. From day, we go to booking. And we want to pass the date. And for the label, we do next. Here, and we can get rid of these spaces. Hit Command B. All right. So this, we can, let's just test this before we continue and in case it's broken. <laughs> so for this, let's try to book. A is working, y'all. That means it's working because we got rid of the old navigation. So we're able to navigate to booking. And now in booking, we need to do some changes. And we're not even done with the day view, to be honest, because we need to do some changes. Let's go back to booking first. So if you see here, you may think, oh, let's do a navigation link in here, yada, 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 right? But we can't or we shouldn't because we need to make an asynchronous call. And with, from my experience, at least using a navigation link from there is not a good idea and you really I haven't seen a good a good way to do that. So what we need to do is we need to go back to our home view and we need to track the path here. Remember this path? Well, this path is going to be super important because we're going to pass it through all the views in our hierarchy. So let's do that and we will call it binding since this path is going to be changeable. And you'll see in a second why. And I'm just going to break my whole project and put this everywhere. Actually, let's not do that because let's do it one, one, let's take it one step at a time. Even though I want to, I want to do <laughs> navigation path. All right. Fix command B. Now we need to pass the path in here, and this is going to give us an error because of the order, but we'll pass it anyways. All right, day view, hit command B. Okay, so we set up the path for the day view. Then the next is booking. Let's set up the path in here. And we call dot constant navigation path. Hit command B. Fix this issue. Hit command B. Fix this issue. A cheat code is we can just copy this, paste that in here. All right. Now we go back to booking. And before we continue our navigation or pasting the path in all of our views, super cool thing we could do. Shout out to navigation stack is we can call path dot append and we can append the next view that we want to show. And the next view from booking is confirmation. So that's what we'll do. And we have access to, I believe, what do we call it? Current date. 
And this will navigate us to the next view. Let's just run it. Enough with the talking. Let's run it. So let's load up Wednesday and oh look, 1130 is booked because that's we booked it. Let's book 10 o'clock. And before we navigate, we need to enter this. So let's do, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we can just leave this. And this is for Wednesday at 10. Let's schedule it. Hey, we navigated. That's dope. And I'm pretty sure this was posted to our database. We can actually pull it up. Where is our, let's, where's Google Chrome? Oh, there we go. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Now let's see what are, what's next. So now we navigate from here to confirmation. So what's up in confirmation? We don't have any navigation in here actually, but we're still gonna bring it in because this is where we actually are gonna pop to the root view controller. And this is where the power of the navigation path, it will show itself because Let's fix these issues. This is a constant navigation path. Command B. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Wait, can I go? Let me see something. Go to confirmation view. Ah, the order here is not consistent with the previous one. So let's do, let's keep it consistent. So we'll have to fix this and we'll need to go to our home view. This is the pretty cool part about navigation path is like you'll set it in the root or the home view, whichever, wherever the navigation is being created. And underneath that navigation, you can, or in that, in this home, we can declare everywhere we're gonna go. And this will be like the source of truth that we can always refer to uh, in all the places we can go within this hierarchy. Now back here, all we need to do is just call path equal to navigation path by itself. And we can, and this line here will reset the navigation path and send us to the beginning. Enough talking, let's test this. So let's try to book Wednesday. I'm booking every day, every appointment on Wednesday. So now who are we? Let's be Rocky, my dog. Rocky at Gmail. I want some treats. Let's schedule this event. Boom, it gets scheduled. All right, now we hit done. And when we hit done, this should send us back home. Let's see what happens. Oh, so bam, this is working. And we have basically completed our Calendly clone. There's not much I want to add. We've completed our Calendly clone and we're able to fetch all the appointments available and we can actually change this to show different weeks in advance by going to our database manager and change this to like two. And you see here is showing weeks in advance. This is actually showing three weeks in advance, but since our current week is all the available appointments in our current week are in the past, this is why we have no appointments for this week, but we do have for the next two weeks or three weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and tutorial. It's been a lot of fun. I got to play around with Superbase, navigation stack, learned quite a bit. Hope you did as well. One challenge you could do is incorporate like a sign in or an authentication service where people can actually sign in and log into this before they book an appointment. You can also challenge yourself on figuring out how you can automatically send an email or confirmation email to the email address they put here. You can also add an error handling in here. We didn't cover error handling. Those are just some potential challenges, maybe things you guys can work on and Actually, if you guys want me to do that, let me know in the comments below. And if we get 10 new Patreons or Patreons, I'll do it. We will go through and add like the, an onboarding or like authentication services. And we'll go through and set up sending a confirmation email. So if that's something you would like to see, sign up for the Patreon and the source code for this project will also be in the Patreon. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe. 
Let me know if you want to see more of these type, type of videos. And yeah, I hope you have a good day and you keep coding out there. All right, y'all, I'm out for now. Peace. I'm riding between it all in this bird to play. I'm a piece of the buzz, woman, fit where you need.